Hello and welcome back to Grand Prix Baltimore. I'm Randy Bueller, joined by Gabe Carlton Barnes. You're looking at the feature match area there. We're going to zero in on the match that has just started between Chris Bakula and Brock Parker. These guys are 7 and 0. Oh. Have already clinched day two at this point, but they'd love to go in at the top of the Swiss rather than the bottom. Or the middle. Top will do just nicely, thank and, you. And, and Brock's off to a great start. Yeah, that's a solid curve. Only a couple of Warriors on the first two turns. And Can you actually get a beatdown deck out of this format, though? Listen to people talk between rounds, and it's just like the aggressive decks in this format seem so bad. Uh, I, I think you can. You know, last round we saw Joe Demestrio uh, pull off a, a pretty aggressive um, uh, uh, match uh, closing game in, in game three. Just doing exactly the opposite of what you expect. He played a uh, Master of the Pearls on turn two. Oh my. And started attacking with it. Well, and both of these guys out to pretty hot yeah, starts here. Chief attacks through the Aven, but uh, debilitating injury takes it down. And, and Pakula did make a pretty aggressive play with that Aven playing on turn two. Saw, saw Brock getting on the board fast, said, I gotta keep up. Yeah, that makes sense. Versus one drop, two drop. No. Not that the one drop is doing much damage now. It's 05 though, isn't that exciting? <laughs> it, can, it can do some good blocking. And here's a bit of revelation. So Brock's gonna look in the top four and decide which two he wants to have in his hand, which two in the graveyard. Well, Brock only has two forests in his deck. Uh, and so he is legitimately two color, like two color with a very light splash? Very light splash. Two dual lands that produce green and two forests. So he might be looking for green mana here, but he might just be perfectly happy with the situation. I see we've got him listed as Orzov. Yeah, sure Looks do. Like he's actually probably Obzon, but... He does have, he has two Obzon guides and an Ascendancy in his deck. That's it? Uh, no, that's it. One Willie locks it on me. Yep. So only one card that he can't play. Only one card that requires green mana. Right. Three others that are better if you can flip him over. So. He's, he's proving that a, a smooth mana is a very, a very good thing to have, being 7 and up. More face-up morphs. Kula wants to get the flyer onto the board. I, I love the face-up uh, misfire because it, it's such a good card to unmorph that, that you get to counter a spell, basically, but it's so hard to execute. And the 3-1 flyer for four is really good in this format. Yeah. So I, I really like this play from Pakula. Then do you think he needs to trade with his chief, or is he uh, just going to be able to race it? Yeah, Brock, Brock started quick, but then he took a whole turn off to draw cards, so I think Pakula is ready to turn around and go on the offensive. And that, that turn to Avon, maybe that was just how Pakula wanted to play. A morph and an outlast. Right. Does Chris have the magical fifth land? No fifth land. He's no attacking with that land. morph and only four mana available to flip it over. Uh, he does, however, have a boon in Oh, jeez. Yeah, you don't want to play the fifth land. Nope. Come on, you can trade, says Chris <laughs> to Brock. You want to try a trade here, don't you? He, Brock's not falling for it. He doesn't. He goes down to... 13, but Chris is, that, that boon, if, he, if that lands on the, the flyer, it's going to be a really quick clock. Because he can hit him one more time, drop him to 10, and then it's a two turn clock. Although, Archer's Parapad can potentially speed the clock up a little bit. No absolutely. black mana right now, no fifth land. A blocker, though. Certainly. And, and Brock could very well play that force this turn and unmorph an Abzan guide. Um, Oof. Which would, would sort of put Chris's plans to kill him quickly in the air to bed, but that's not terrible for Pakula. The, the absent guide isn't, isn't getting past that pair of bed. The morph does not attack. So, time for more speculation. What's your read? Sage Eye Harrier? With that green mana, it could be the Woolly Loxodon. It could be. It could also be the uh, could say Saigu Archer, as far as Chris knows. And we know it isn't. Right, why would it, what else does he have in his deck? It seems like odds on guide you would want to attack and flip, right? Yeah, I think it's certainly not that. But the Sage Eye Harrier could block the 3-1 flyer. And he does have one He's playing deck. a Sage Eye? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So. 
Could get blown out by a uh, dragon scale balloon, though. He could, and I think we're going to see that happen right now. All right, Misfire Weaver into the red zone. 3 1 flyer. There it Brock is. Brock has the Sage Eye Harrier. Good read, GCB. Does Brock have the Can feed I block? resistance, though? Yes. Go ahead and block, and then I will untap my Misfire Weaver. Dragon Scale Boon. Two plus one plus one counters. This is a 5 3 Misfire Weaver. That's a really good size. Although, that Sage Eye Harrier is a soldier, so this isn't. Oh, a Chief of the Scale! Yep. Warrior. Chief of the scale means that extra point of toughness is just enough that uh, Dragon Scale Boon merely creates a bounce. Um, so it's not awful for Brock, like we thought it might be, but um, Chris does have a gigantic flyer and it looks like he has a Soul Tide Charm in his hand too. So if he draws a black man, he can knock that Sage Eye right out of the sky. Am I reading that correctly? Yes, he is playing a Soul Tide Charm. It also makes Brock it awkward is... for Brock because Chris can just attack in and if he has a way to remove the chief afterwards, <laughs> then that Sage Eye's gone. No black mana for Chris. And yeah, Chris doesn't have a way to get through right now unless that morph is something really big. He's just going to play a 3-6. Yep, just going to keep building his board. That will stop Brock from pumping his disowned ancestor unless he deploys something else because Chris now has the attack of 5-3 flyer and 3-6 on the ground. Brock can't block if he has a tap disowned ancestor. He'll have to take 3. Four mana for an Alabaster Kieran. And it looks like Brock does have a feat of resistance in his hand. Let's see him leave his two mana up for it. Yep. There's black mana for Chris, but it, it won't activate this turn. And here comes a morph. Interesting. And morph's been hanging out for a while, not attacking to suddenly attack. Yeah, it, uh, it, you would think that meant it was a woolly Loxodon, maybe. Last turn he did use his man for the War Behemoth instead, but he didn't try to attack with that. So, uh, Disowned Ancestor was untapped last turn, I think? Oh, Disowned Ancestor outlasted last turn, maybe? Maybe you're right. Well, because Disowned Ancestor, it would have had six toughness then, so... Oh no, seven because of the Chief, sure. Brock's going to say, okay, go ahead and unmorph, and my feet of resistance will bail me out here. Yeah. How do you block if you're Brock? Well, if you take the Alabaster Kirin and just block the morph, obviously it forces the action, but you're more likely to kill an attacking creature if you put more guys in front. Um, if he blocks with both of those, though, and it's a Wooly locks it on, then... Yeah, he puts the feet of the resistance on the first one, and, and both will survive. No, he's just going to single block. It is a Wooly Loxodon. And there's the feet, as predicted. Yeah. That's not... Kieran seems like the best creature to get that plus one plus one counter onto also. Sure, it sure does, but this actually might work out well for Chris, because now his... Soul Tide Charm, which he's going to be able to play next turn, isn't going to get resisted. Sure. It's, it's not so bad when the Feet of Resistance, all it does is, you know, stop a creature from dying to a, a morph. Chris didn't lose a card, so that's good for him. Kieran is up to three power. Chris does not seem interested in trading his Misfire Weaver for it. Rock plays a morph. So, the question is, is Chris, oh, he has an armament core in his hand, too. So, yeah. he can build a really big misfire weaver and kill a flyer. He has that huge creature on the ground. I think that's probably what he's going to do. Can he do both those things on the same turn, or is he one short? Uh, he only has one black yeah, mana, so like he can... blossoming sands, too. So. Yeah, so he, he can only do one. 
But the Misfire Weaver would be big enough to attack on its own if he just plays the Armored Core and puts all the counters on it. And that would be, you, you can imagine that he puts the two counters on, attacks for seven, Brock says, okay, I'll take it, and I'll try to race you back. Ah. Oh, geez, abs on guide? It's an end step abs on guide. <clears throat> and Chris passed the turn, so it did not go with the armor and car plan. Right, so it looks like he's Presumably, gonna... he's got Saltat Charm ready. Right. And the guide, not super influential here, Willie locks on shuts it down pretty good, unless Brock has something for that. Disowned Ancestor is big enough to hold off a Wooly Loxodon right now. Sure kind of crazy. Is. Yeah, Chris saying, my life total's gotten pretty low. Why don't I just go ahead and use my removal? Yep. Why don't I get your flyer out of the way of my potentially attacking Misfire Weaver? Uh-huh. And now he only has to put one counter on the Weaver to get it past the Sage Eye Harrier, too. Although, two counters shortens the clock by a turn because it's seven attacking against 13 life. Wow. <laughs> of course. Those abs on guides can get him some life back if he needs it. <laughs> now, this own ancestor is okay with outlasting because two abs on guides can block a Willy Loxodon. That's right. And those are four or five abs on guides, of course, because abs on guides will work. But that chief looks really good in Brock's deck. Yeah. It's, it's every creature's a warrior that's in play right now. Although, I mean, Brock's two-color aggro deck has been blunted. Chris has still got a double-digit life total. And it feels like it's Chris, whose more powerful spells are going to be able to push, push something through, right? Absolutely true, yeah. Salt Eye Charm, Armor McCor. The three-color gold cards are really good in this format. Two-color decks do not tend to have enough power level to win consistently once you get past the initial flurry. Yeah, if you don't have a lot of those, there's some uncommons that kind of help in those situations. You know, a red-white deck can have Ride Down. Sure. Uh, and, and Murderous Cut can help you. I mean, he's got the Chief up. of the Scale. Yeah. It's about as good as it gets for Black White. Yeah, not great at breaking through those bigger creatures, though. All right, well, Armor McCore put one counter on the Misfire Weaver, which is enough to attack through Sage Eye Harrier, even with the uh, extra toughness from the Chief. Armor McCore itself being a 5-5 five -five is nice against a board with two 4-5 Obzon Guides. Right, very, very well. And Brock is Bacula. digging Bitter Revelation. <sighs> looking for answers to a gigantic he flyer. He found one. What did he find? He found a feat of resistance, which is going to allow him to block with his Sage Eye Harrier and make it big enough to continue to block. Yeah, that one plus one plus one counter is going to be the difference, isn't it? It's going to be a big difference. He could also potentially gain life off of one of his abs and guides by just attacking if he wants to gain, give himself some insurance. But I think feat of resistance is probably insurance enough. Now, it looked to me like it was two lands, Mardu, Horde Chief, and Feet. And we'll get rid of two lands. A Horde Chief, not, not particularly exciting on this board. It's only the one one token not exciting. So yeah, he says, he's just wants to add a two three. Yeah. No raid trigger, not needed. Cool. It looks like he drew a gold card. Those are usually good. They are, and he's got lots of colors of mana. So the downside of not being able to cast. All them, right. Not, Misfire not attacks. Sage I Harrier blocks. We know about the second feat of resistance. This does turn this into a bounce. The six four will bounce against a Sage Eye that is suddenly seven toughness. <laughs> a, two, a two seven. That is quite the wall. Um, so now this may get down to the point where it's just Pakula shooting his archer's parapet at Brock while Brock, as he gets worn down, has to use his abs and guides to gain life. They don't gain a lot of life though. They attack once and get eaten. Exactly. It is four turns, though, of Archer's Parapet damage. Fair. It looks like Brock has a land. Yeah, 
Here we see the archer's parapet go to work. Now, if Chris had put both of those armament core counters on the misfire weaver, he'd still be attacking here. Do you think it was correct to split them the way he did? Yeah, I think, you know, Rocket already played one feat of resistance. Yeah. That's the only, re I guess, maybe another uh, chief would have the same effect, but making that 4-5 against those absent guides, I mean, the 5-5 five five against the 2-4-5. Against the 2-4-5s. Yeah, I agree with you. It would be very results-oriented to uh, critique yeah. that decision here, I think. It made a lot of sense at the time. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, and you picked it out at the time as the reason he was doing it. Yep, yep. Now, if he could move it, I'm sure he'd be with it at this point. Uh, oh, so he's drawn Trail of Mystery, which isn't going to do much for him here. Brock draws a spell. I think it's a white spell. It is a Mardu hate blade. Uh, the ground yeah. is thoroughly gummed up. Yeah, I think that hate blade is going to start attacking because there's nothing on Chris's side that he wants to trade with that hate blade. It's one of the things about having a board full of really awesome creatures is you don't have the, <laughs> the little guy that you're just ready to toss away. Although, is that a Kintry Warden? I think it is. <laughs> Well, I mean, it probably means it's time to play the Trail of Mystery. Sure does. Yeah, we have a morph now. Sure. And we're going to morph. Sure, he's got enough mana to flip it and regenerate, right? Yeah, and he's get, he gets to go get a land. He'll probably get a swamp here, so he has an extra black if he wants to um, play a black spell and activate Parapet on a turn. Is he playing a swamp? He is. Does get the swamp. It's funny, Kindry Warden would not normally deal enough damage to the one two hate blade <laughs> to kill it, but Trail of Mystery. <clears throat> He's gonna change that. Says, yeah, plenty big enough on the turn it flips over. This is, you get this the regen, really you get the plus two, plus two, you get to beat up the hate blade. Although, you know, Brock might be thinking, okay, well, I don't know if I want to trade for them more for Right. Not. I'd trade with anything else, but that more, eh, and he might just not keep it back to hold off the Willie Locks it on. Now, how does Brock actually win this game? <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, he's got it stabilized, more or less. Ooh, Ghostfire Blade, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a very good card. He does have Plenty of mana, so it's just plus two, plus two, wherever he wants it. Obs on Guide seems like a fine choice. So 6-7 OBS on Guide can no longer be eaten by a Willy Loxodon. So it can be eaten by a double block, but at least it gets Oh, it's something. a trade, right? Yeah, it could, it'll probably trade for War Behemoth here. He'll, Chris will block with uh, Behemoth and the Kintree. He wants to... Why can't you block with... Uh, it's oh, you, it's you a 6-7. You power, sorry, yeah, so probably you the block with Lox Can't you block with Loxodon, Kintree, and lose nothing? Um, Yes, you can. That's a better block. Yeah, you just need to get seven power in front of it. And if it's Kintree locks it on, then you don't lose any of them. Right. And Chris, it looks like, has made that exact block because now Brock is saying... Order the blockers. Yep. I got this guy. And he's big. You Not that that's actually super relevant, but... Regeneration part is relevant. So... Brock's on guy dies in this double to this double block. Does gain six life, which is certainly relevant, but uh, yeah, not it's a what one for Brock zero card for. wise. Yeah, no, Brock was hoping for it all. I don't. I mean, the attack looked correct based on what he knew. He can't sit there forever. His board is held together precariously by one flyer, right? Yeah. If Chris comes up with anything for Sage Eye Harrier, he gets to just start attacking with a six power Misfire Weaver again. Brock knows that even if something goes wrong, he's at least going to gain some life out of this. So. Yeah, I think it was a, a great attack, and it, it's just that Kintry Warden showing off for us again. <laughs> really, it was about the only card there that really makes that attack look bad. He's been doing work all day. It really has. Although I guess he could have been a big on morph um, because of the plus two, plus two bonus. Anything with five toughness, uh, Sage Eye would also have survived there. <laughs> Chris seems kind of excited to untap. Yep. It's like, all right, I survived his turn. 
Nothing bad happened. That was great. In fact, something good happened despite the fact that my opponent drew one of his best cards. Right, right. So, one less rare to fear. Yeah, you, you have to think that Chris is favored in this game, not just because of the board state, but in the stall, because he has the, th the four color deck and has been able to work in all of his uh, most powerful spells. Yep. <laughs> is there a point where that disowned ancestor becomes a problem? Uh, well, not with a Kintry Ward. Got this problem solved. Can't block everything. Uh, that's true. The only other real threat is that guy, and he knows he can just double block it. Get rid of it. But that's a 813 disowned ancestor. It's getting pretty big. 915? Only 914. No, 15. 14. 14, 914. Plus 4, plus 1. Uh, and Brock not, not playing colors where you fear him drawing a falter effect either. True. There's no flying crane technique. There's no barrage of boulders. Brock does have an Abzan Falconer in his deck. <laughs> Suddenly Ancestor can go to the air. <laughs> that would be pretty good. Uh, and he's dug through a lot of cards. You know, he, he, he looked at four extra cards. Yeah, that probably is what he's playing for here. Yeah, it looks like it. He's not going to attack any Kintry Warden, but if he finds his Falconer, suddenly he's got a 10 power flyer. And that Mistfire Weaver looks gigantic, but it's not gigantic enough for that. As the, as the more the stalled board causes them to start to fly off the edge of the camera. <laughs> it just gets bigger and bigger. This might be the record for the weekend. Roger's Ancestor. <laughs> it's pretty big. Oh, wow. Oh, suspension field. Sage Eye Harrier? Yup. No flying blocker for you. How about I attack with the six power flyer? You got anything? And uh, the morph let me is... check. No, Willie lost nope. it on. Game so on to Chris Pakula. The, a huge board stall, which finally uh, ended by Pakula uh, drawing the removal spell. A, a suspension field, which I'm sure he was very excited to see. Uh, but Brock's deck looks dangerous. It's two like color. Ghost Blade. Oh, Shuhei Nakamura back in the feature match area. 1-1 <clears throat> one, one already? This is game three? No. I was fast. <laughs> the game we watched was a little bit slow, too, I think. Fair. Well, look at this. An Ice Feather even and an Ash Cloud Phoenix? Is that what we're seeing on Dan's side? I believe so. This again, Shuhei's Saddle Brute and Mystic that we've seen from him. We saw from him earlier on. I was going to say that Dan's graveyard looked pretty good, but I think Rakshasa's secret happened. I think that's where the graveyard came yeah, from. Yeah, it did. Which is, earlier Shuhei was casting that secret and hitting a lot of lands, but this time it got some spells. But Ashcloud Phoenix, one of those cards that very, very hard to answer. And Dan just has so much flying damage. Yeah, it seems like a game where Shuhei just needs to race. And this is exactly oh, what Dan geez. wants to do. He, he takes out the... Two plus one plus one counters on the Ice Feather. Even. Oh, he didn't. I thought he was going to take out the Saddle Brute. So he's saying, I'm putting you on a clock. Shuhei must be quite low. I mean, it's eight power in the air. It's huge. I yeah. don't care what his life total was. It's low now. Shuhei has eight power on the ground. So the crackback is significant. The guy who took a turn off to cast Rakshasa's secret doesn't usually win these races. That's true. And Dan readily punishing him for that. That does seem like a card that should be good the way everyone's building their sealed decks, though. Rakshasa's secret? It does, and I'm a fan of those effects. 
if you watch people play this format, there aren't a lot of people holding lands in their hand to protect themselves from that kind of effect either because they need them to unmorph and yep. cast their big spells. Shohei going into the tank. Maybe, maybe he's counting his graveyard real quick to see if he can scare Dan Jordan with a dead drop threat. <laughs> but uh, I think that one would have been played quickly if he had it. Um, the other thing, I think Dan may have a disdainful stroke here, the way he played that turn. Is it not a blossoming sands? Is that a sands? Or a f yeah, you're right. It might be a, a sands. If it is, then. And certainly not a stroke. Or it could be a feat of resistance that he's holding up. Sure. All right, looks like Shuhei's made up his mind. Taps the Rattle Claw. And Master, Master of the Way. way. Let me ask you what it is. So now we find out. There he is, indeed. Wow. Feet of Resistance. Yeah. And that's it. Shuhei knew there was no way he could beat Feet of Resistance. As soon as he saw it, he'd already worked it out. Yeah, if he's got feet, I can't win. <laughs> that's what he was thinking about. Is there a way I can play around feet? Yeah. Concluded no, went for it, feet was there. So Dan Jordan wins that. Were those guys 7-0? Uh, I didn't get the uh, pairing sheet. Oh, I didn't see, did Shuhei win last round? Because he was 6-0 going in. Uh, did Shuhei win last round? He was your round? turbo match, yes. wasn't he? Yep. Cool. It was a, a, a crazy last game. He beat a, a Sarkin. Wow. Um, that attacked him like four times. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, four only adds up to 16. Yeah, it might have been only three times, you know, it was doing very fast, but it was, uh, it was pretty wild. It looked like that Sarkin was going to end the game, but Shoei found a way to get around it. And he played Death Frenzy, it was really huge for him. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That, that Saddle Brute in the, in the first game sat back and did nothing when it looked like it could be attacking and offering a, you just would just get a two for one if the guy blocked, but he held it back and ended up Death Frenzying away all the creatures that could have blocked it. So. <laughs> Both games he won. Death friends he won. Did a lot of work. <clears throat> Alright, so Brock gonna see if he can get this back to tide. Down a game. Both players like gain lands on turn one. Mardu Hateblade comes down sort of on schedule on turn two. <laughs> well, it's ready to have Death Touch right away. Oh, Trail of Mystery on turn two. Uh, that is when you want to play your Trail of Mystery. I don't know if I see another. Oh, there's a basic in Kapula's hand. So he is going to have really nice mana this game if he has at least one more. He just drew one, so that looks pretty good. There it is. It's already got three colors. Gets to play a morph here. And it looks like Ice Feather Aven. Sure. Or Mistfire Weaver. It's gonna be the Mistfire. And he'll go and get a little. Triggers the trail. Well, anything he's getting. I think Island. I think so too. <laughs> Brock had no turn three play. What do you what do you think? Oh, that's that's not good for him. Giving Chris time to just Attacks with the hate blade, knowing he's got activated death touch. Chris is not interested in trading for the dorky little hate, ba hate blade. Yeah. But it's not much of a beatdown against somebody who's digging all the lands out of their deck. And... Rock says, let's see if I can find an answer. It's not exactly the beatdown curve Brock needs with his Mostly two color deck. It's like two and a half colors. No, no. Chris has twice as many colors, right? Yeah. Two and a half to five. Yeah, Brock, Brock can't be optimistic about this game so far. You did find his Ghostfire Blade, but that card's usually good when you're the aggressor and you have some creatures. Another morph. Another morph. Another trigger of the trail. It's another island. The 
he'll play Blossoming Sands, it looks like. So it looks like Brock is probably going to play a Kieran this turn. Oh, he has an Abzan Ascendancy. Hmm. That could shift the game pretty quickly if he can get a board presence. It's fifth mana, but well, he's got all his colors. Yeah, and so it looks like he's he's trying to decide whether to play the Alabaster Kirin and hold up the Hate Blade mana. Or play Absent Guide and then equip it with the Ghost Fire Blade in his hand. Which would you do? Uh, I think I would do just what Brock did, which is attack with the Hate Blade so that it gets through, because it's not going to be useful on defense, and then make sure all my mana gets spent this turn. Because I want to spend mana and get all my guys into play and then play that Absent in Ascendancy. Looks like it's Brock's plan too. The Ascendancy, super powerful. Is it going to be enough to break through on this board? Uh, once he plays it, he'll have a gigantic Abzan guide. Well, Chris does have a fifth land, and it's the island that we knew about. Oh, wow, Suspension Field. It's going to take this morph out. The Ghost Fire Bade will fall off, but. He, uh, he got an abs on guide. That's got to feel pretty good. It does. And Brock not not gets to keep attacking with his two morphs. Got nothing else to do with his last three mana, I guess. And the fact that Pakula just gets to, you know, remove a guy and keep attacking, really foiling Brock's plan of trying to turn that ascendancy on and get a yeah. bunch of value out of it. So... Now he plays the Kirin, and he has Feet of Resistance up, which is nice. Well, we might see that situation again where the, the Morph runs into the Alabaster Kirin, and <laughs> you have to use the Feet just to, to keep the Kirin alive. Would you attack into the uh, Hate Blade here if you're Chris? Um, I don't know. What are my morphs? Oh, so his morphs, this is what he's thinking about right now. He has uh, the uh, Ice Feather Aiden. Okay. So he's trying to decide if he wants to bounce um, Kieran and see the feet, which he will. It's a really awkwardly sized Kieran for Chris now because... His other creature is a Mistfire Weaver, the, the three one Yeah, fly. Kieran holds off the team and yeah. attacks. And can't be smited, because it's a three four. Sure. Unless it, it picks up a Ghostfire Blade, in which case. <laughs> Chris is a grip full of cards, though. It feels like he's sort of fought his way through the feet, or at least the first feet. Uh -huh. Now, does he have a trick? Does he have a way to deal with that Kieran? And I think he's looking at his hand, thinking the same thing, like, I should have a way to win this game. Um, and he has his own Abzan Ascendancy, wow. which is pretty good. So is he going to unmorph here? Nope, he's going to gain a life. And I think he just has to pass the turn. Hmm. Three four really is a great size. It is a really good size. And Brock drew a pretty good card to draw here. It, it, it's a it's a big creature and it gives him one more creature but a counter on for the ascendancy. Mm. So he's got a four eight. 
Crazy. Death touch creature. He's hitting for four in the air. Uh, Chris now at least can, can kill that with the uh, smite. Shambling attendants was the new creature, yeah? Shambling attendants, yeah. Dueling Abzan Ascendancies in this game. Brock seems to be using more dice. That means he's ahead, right? <laughs> Is that how the Abzan Ascendancy mirror works? I, I think that helps a lot, yeah. I'll smite the monstrous. Brock will Takes be the down. first one to trigger Abzan Ascendancy. It's almost too bad for him. He got that extra counter on the Alabaster Kirin. Yeah, that brought it into smite range. Creature is really dominant. And here, Chris has what six power worth of flyers. Uh, he actually has eight power because of the trigger from Trail of Mystery. So the Misfire Weaver is triggered and is now a five three. This turn. Yep. It's not going to match up very well against those. Uh, the tokens from the Ascendancy. Tokens in the future, though. although, shouldn't that Misfire have a counter on it? Did he play it after the Ascendancy? No, it's been there for a while. I feel like he took the dice off when he flipped it. He took the dice off when he flipped it, yeah. Never put it back. So that, that Misfire Reaver should have a die on it. Great. Attendance and hate blade. Attack. There's no ground creatures to hold off, so get in for what you can. It's a pretty big crackback. Now, Brock's down to five, so these the two flyers are pretty scary. But that that missing counter is making a big difference. Because um, of the spirit token? Yeah. Yeah, the one one flying spirit token looks like it can trade with Misfire Weaver. And with you, I think Misfire Weaver is supposed to have a plus one plus one counter on it. And there, yeah, all right. Chris they remembers. figured it out. Yep. So I, I think they're they're discussing amongst themselves, or they're gonna talk to a judge. Yeah, I don't know how this works. It was there for a while. It was there. It got moved when it unmorphed. There is the judge for the future match area. Can't hear what she's saying, but maybe when he gets more. Okay, it looks like he's gonna get to keep the counter. Brock will <laughs> appeal Brock it does not look happy. For his entire turn, you know, he was basing on the idea that he had traded the Misfire Weaver, so uh, it, it, it's does really change the game because Chris just gets to attack with both his guys here. Right, blocks in jump block mode. <clears throat> yep. Chris at 10, Brock with 6 power, 7, 8 with the Ghost Fire Blade. But most likely Pakula has something he can add from his hand. Probably. <laughs> they're, they're trying to sort of go back and see where we were. How do you think this ruling is supposed to work out? <clears throat> well, because they changed the game state and then moved on, I, I guess there's a, um, a possibility that the judge says, well, the game state was changed and you didn't realize it soon enough, so the game state stays as it was changed. So, uh, and also there's the question of how much damage did he take last turn? Did he take a point from that misfire? Week? Yeah. Right? So. It's true. Yeah, I, th I think he actually may lose the counter. They've randomly put a card back on top of Chris's library. They're backing they're, they're up. They're backing up. So Brock has the ability to change his turn if he wants to? That's a lot of backing up. Well, they back up to Brock's turn, not all the way to Chris's. 
And Brock doesn't change his play. Brock says, what matters here is the counter's there or it isn't there. Obviously, he couldn't block either of those anyway, so it's not yeah. like he's going to keep a creature back. So here we go. It looks like Chris is going to be able to get around this um, spirit, but Brock has a chance. He's not dead in this game. Even without the plus one, plus one counter, though, Brock's spirit would trade with Misfire Weaver, and the Aven is still lethal in two answer. hits. Yeah. And it's hitting here, so it's really one hit. Then again, Brock has yeah, I was going to say, Brock chose not to put Ghostfire and Blade onto that flying blocker. He's clearly had something better to do with his mana. Although you have to think. Yeah. It actually might have been better for him to put the counter on the blocker. Although maybe he needs the extra power so he can try to win this turn. Yeah, it seems to me it would just be better to put the... He can do it next turn. Next turn he can play, put Ghost Fire Blade on the Spirit to block the Ice Feather in it. And have mana left over to do something else. Well, let's we'll see if that's what he does. Is that a bitter revelation? Yeah. <laughs> a truly bitter, bitter revelation from the top. That this very, is your card very well named turn. card. So he will equip. Oh, on the hate blade. Well, he's got to get in for some extra damage One, here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Does Chris want to go to three? Does he, he want to chump block Chris with his has, flyer? Uh, the seven mana, six, seven in this here. Pearl Lake Agents. Really? Flash. It looks like that, that card is in his hand. So I think he's going to play it here. Sure. And just say, all right, let's trade. There it is. Oh, he actually gets a 1-1 flyer out of this from the Ascendancy, right? Uh-huh. Which means that he wins even through that blocker. Uh, yeah, it does. Because he has two... He has three flyers and there's only one flying blocker. Although, if he blocks and kills the Shambling Attendants, Brock also gets a 1-1 flyer. Good point. All right. Chris has summoned Pearl Lake Ancient. It's being attacked by a pair of Death Touchers. One of them is larger than the other. Shambling Attendants is what, 4-6? Uh, it's normally a 3-5, so it's 4-6, yes. So the, the Pearl Lake can trade with it. Oh, forcing him to give Death Touch to the Hate Blade is great because it means he can't equip the Ghost Fire Blade. Interesting. Unless he plays a land. Which Chris would be happy to see anyway that the card in his hand is a land. So he does block Pro Lake Ancients on Mardu Hate Blade. They're both going to get 1 1 flyers here. These ascendancies make it really hard to win, they just generate all these <laughs> little jump block tokens. Is Chris going to bounce his Burly Kingdoms? Yeah, he is. Interesting. So he made Brock spend the mana on activated Death Touch, but does not let the creatures trade. Oh, he had another land over there, I guess. Yeah, three it's for Ghostfire. Okay. So, yeah, okay. He can, he's able to activate it. Oh, this was, this was to avoid Brock get... Avoid the creation of the 1-1s. One so he says, nothing dies in combat. I don't want any 1-1s one out here. Oh, Armament Core, that's game. He's gonna Armament Core his 1-1 one, one Flyer, and Brock can only block one. Block has oh, no. one 3-3 three, three three Flyer. because of the lands he bounced. He doesn't have a white and a black. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Chris is kicking himself right now. Why did I bounce this dismal backwater? Oh man, that is wild. Wow. <laughs> this game. Chris picked up three lands to return Pearl Lake Ancient to his hand. He picked up the game lands because he wanted to gain life by replaying them, which is a reasonable thing to do, but it meant that when he top decked Armament Core, he can't cast it this turn. He's not able to cast it because he needs white and black, and he has white and black, but he needs both of them at the same time. And he doesn't have that. Now, it's still pretty good for Chris here, right? Brock? Aven trades with that 1-1 one, one flyer. Chris gets a second spirit token. Yeah, Brock Brock's goes to one. one. Chris's life isn't particularly high, and he can't cast the Pearl Lake Ancients this turn, so he's gonna play something else, it looks like. 
is it a morph? And it's a radical on mystic, which if he wants to, means he can unmorph it, create three mana, and play another morph. Although he could have just done that by playing it face up, so <laughs> it's likely not what he's doing. And <laughs> Kula goes and gets that swamp and says, next time this won't happen, I'll have a black or white land to play. <laughs> ah. One turn too late. Well, it's a spell. All right, Hate Blade picks up the Ghost Fire Blade. Is it a Russia battle? It is a Russia oh, battle. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, Chris is kicking himself. Okay, so both of these One, creatures two, are really three, dangerous. Four. They're both six power. So, yeah, I think they're Chris, both six power, right? Yeah, so Chris can take one of them. He can. But Brock's going to gain six life Yeah, the here. life link is quite relevant. So I think Chris probably blocks with the morph because that gives him a spirit. Shambling Attendance is not a warrior, correct? Uh, correct, it's not a warrior. It's a zombie. So that one doesn't have life link. An, an, an unemployed zombie. Unemployed yeah, zombie. Just, just a zombie. Just shambling. Yeah. Although its title is Attendant, so maybe it's a zombie attendant. Chris agonizing about the play here. He's got a big hand, but it's mostly lands from the trail and the pearl lake. Looks like he's going to keep the morph. Chris right. is going to go to two here. Chump one, take Rock's the other. Go to seven. Fall to two. On tap? No. Nope. It doesn't look like Chris can kill him this turn. No. Unless that morph is a Loxodon. Oh, it could be a Willy Loxodon. Yeah, no, check, no, it's, it's a Radical, a radical Mystic. Claw. We discussed this. So, the Radical Mystic. Well, yeah, like it's still four power. And the flip from the Trail of Mystery. Oh, yeah. So he's got five power. He adds three mana. <laughs> And then he adds three more mana. And he's going to play his Armored Core. There it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is lethal, so he right? Does have it. Yep. One, two, three in the air. One, Chris, two, three, four. Three plus four is seven. Chris solved the puzzle. Okay. Chris solved it. <laughs> Maybe could have solved it a turn earlier if he'd anticipated what he was going to top deck yeah. with his lane drops, but he got there. He did. So that was a long match, too. I think if Brock had won that, they probably would have wound up drawing. I just heard time call on the round. So Chris Bacall.